my personal opinion is of it is we have right weight divisions for a reason and me being an encyclopedia on boxing and I've studied every heavyweight cruiserweight that's ever lived um, when the cruiserweights step up to the big boys usually they get found wanting and even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived Evander Holyfield when he stepped up to the big boys in Big Daddy Bowl and it's Lewis he was found wanting you can, you can beat the average big ones but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters and we have weight divisions for a reason and he's going to be found wanting when he fights me on May the 18th. Um, even if you look at David Hay, he was an explosive, uh, good cruiserweight and good heavyweight. And when he fought average heavyweights, he could beat them. But when he stepped up to the big boy in Klitschko, it wasn't really a contest. We look at Thomas Adamek. He was a good light heavyweight, good cruiserweight. He beat some good average heavyweights, good world contender heavyweights, stepped up to the big boys, beat. So I expect the same from um, Alexander, to be fair. Who was the other one? Um, Sultan Ibragimov. He was Olympic silver medalist. He was 20-0. He, he was world... Uh, I think he beat Shannon Briggs for the world championship. And he, he was found wanting against Vladimir Klitschko at Madison Square Garden. So I could just keep going on and on and on and on. Let's use Johnny Nelson, for instance. Johnny was very... He was an undefeated cruiserweight when he was cruiserweight. But every time he stepped up heavyweight, he got bashed. So there is... Oh, it's facts. It's facts. I'm not, I'm not slagging anybody off. But what I'm saying is, these are facts. And if anybody wants to go check my boxing history, go do it. I've studied this game all my life. And you cannot prove it wrong. This is my time, my destiny, my era, and my generation. Facts. Frank, you've talked about an Achilles heel for Alexander Usyk as well. Do you want to tell us more about that? Oh, I've, I mean, I've, looked at, uh, I've sort of looked at a lot of these fights going back to the amateur days. And he is a bit of a crybaby when it comes to getting caught to the body. He cries to the referee a lot. And for me, that, was a, that always was, uh, if you want to use the phrase, an Achilles heel or an Achilles body. That's what it, what it is. And he doesn't like it. Factual, he? that is, as yeah, well. Because he, the only time he's been put over is with body shots. Yeah. Better be have dropped him with a yeah, body shot. Yeah. And um, I think it was the Polish guy. What was the Polish cruiserweight called? Um, was he called Goblacki or something Lewinsky. like that? Something like that. I think he dropped him with a yeah. body shot as well. Yeah. So Frank's he, definitely correct there. And I've, I've sort of looked at that. And I looked at that before we before we made the fight with Dubois. And Dubois, Dubois definitely hurt him to the body. Irrespective of what went on, he doesn't like it to the body. That's for sure. And for me, the biggest exponent of exploiting a boxer's weakness is the professor here. And that's what he does. He, he finds that he's... If anybody's going to exploit it, it'll be Tyson. He's got he's got the mental capacity to do that and keep doing what he has to do. And 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 I I know uh, you know people have asked about predictions. That I genuinely genuinely believe that Tyson will win this fight in an explosive start. Tyson, I was watching an interview with Alexander Usyk the other day, and he said that Vladimir Klitschko has reached out and given him some advice. But the well, that'd advi- be Andy advice: how to lose <laughs> the Gypsy King. <laughs> how can Vlad, my old pal Vlad, give anybody any advice? Because he would have used it himself only if he had any advice or any idea how to beat me. It was a, um, an absolute one-sided boxing lesson I give to old Vlad. Yeah. And I believe Vlad Scored. was a, um, a very good, good champion, just like this guy is. The best of his generation. And I said, dinner, I said, if I can't beat old Vlad, I must be useless. And I'll say it again. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good, clearly. That's, that's, that's your headline. If Tyson Fury can't beat Usyk, Tyson's no good. End of. I'm not going to pull any punches. It is what it is. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good. Say I'm no good. And then I'll get a rematch of him and say I'm no good again. If I lose again, <laughs> what more is there to do? But if I beat him, I beat another man. Great. Fantastic. So you talk about how you look facially. It's look how you Hello, look yeah. physically. It's the whole look. I mean, yeah. you look at you. No, it's, 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 it's an all, it's an all round, just the way, the way it's walking from yeah, A yeah, to B. Yeah, you just, yeah. you just, you just you're bouncing, demeanor, really. Your whole demeanour. And your... I'm actually frightened of where I am at the moment. And that's a fact. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm actually terrified of where I am at the moment um, because I'm ready to go this weekend and I've got five more weekends yeah, to go. So, like Sugar said, the thing is not doing tons of training, mm. but it's to do less. Tyson, it seems like, you know, I know a lot of these insults, that they, they roll off your back and, and you're a man who gives as good as he gets, but a couple of team members, you, you've mentioned these people in boxing who maybe put you down, maybe criticise you after the Nganu fight. Use that as a little bit of fuel. Was that something that you needed just to get to add a little bit of spice to this and, and that training camp? Where you not not really, you know, because Van Gogh probably had his haters, but I don't know who they were. 
and mm. someone who's saying negative things about somebody else is not relevant and no one will remember their name mm. so when history comes when it counts no one will remember their name anyway um, and people are going to talk about successful people and no matter who they are what success game they're in what business they're in then they're always going to have people who if they're important if they're worth talking about mm. there's going to be good and bad comments so the person who doesn't have any bad comments is obviously not in a position where people want to talk about it. So I think it's fantastic. I think um, productive criticism is, is an amazing thing. And, um, and as a man who can take everything, give it, take it, whatever, um, it's good, it's healthy, it's a healthy relationship. It's like a love-hate sort of relationship, a bit like my marriage, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> There we go. Shall I'll I just name the ten? Sack you might as well. No, bro, I'll, bro, bro, I'll, bro, I'll do, bro, I'll do bro, Usek, Usek. Yeah. yeah. I'll do AJ, AJ, if you yeah. don't get beaten in, in the meantime. That's four. And then I might chuck a, a Dubois in, if he's back up there, which he is at the moment, or a Joe Joyce. Joe Parker? Joe Parker, chuck well, him in there. Mate, That's seven. You know? yeah, yeah. Seven. Go to America, we'll chuck in some Amer Maybe Deontay Wilder, if he gets back in, a fourth yeah, yeah. fight with old Deontay. Um, maybe a European guy, maybe Aggie. Caballero, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or the tenth. Who would the tenth fight be? Big ten. Who would the tenth be? Ten, 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 ten. Come on. Moses Atama. No, definitely not. Big <laughs> damn <laughs> <laughs> <Think I'm> stupid. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, probably do like a trilogy with like Usak or something afterwards. Oh.